Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, thanks once again to Libra Show Showman, of course, to you for staying with us. We're moving on now to talk about security, the insurgency, banditry, kidnapping, and all that it, uh, you know, it entails. Um, the president, Muhammad Buhari, made a statement a few days ago uh, saying that insurgency will end this year, 2020, and his government will do all it takes. Uh, and of course, uh, he's vowing to end it this year, 2021. We've invited this morning a former uh, assistant director at the DSS, Mr. Dennis Samakri, to speak with us uh, and, of course, share his thoughts on the possibilities of this happening. Good morning, Mr. Amakri. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. How are you? Fantastic. Fine, thank thank you. you very much for joining us. Um, um, so yeah, let's get straight into it. Uh, it's not the first time we've had a statement like this. Uh, since you know, 2015, we've been hearing numerous vows very similar to this one. Um, in what ways you know, would Nigerians see this one and feel different? Or is there anything that should make this one different? Well, um, if uh, the president uh, has the political will to execute that particular promise this time, then I think uh, we'll get somewhere. Uh, I really advise against uh, the president uh, promising people about uh, timelines, because the last time, you know, when uh, they first came in, it was six months we were going to defeat uh, Boko Haram. And uh, after a while, some people said we have technically defeated them. And then, uh, of course, it continued. Now, when you're fighting an insurgency, especially an asymmetric one that is based on ideology, I don't think there's need to give the timeline. Just go ahead and do what you have to do, and then, of course, the results will show by themselves. Indeed, it's not the first time the president is making promises like this. He did say in 2018 that they basically decimated Boko Haram and uh, not long later you see abductions and killings and kidnappings and things like that. Let's talk about you. You, you. you have been in security in Nigeria for a while now. Are you optimistic that the president will deliver on this promise? Well, this year is different from what uh, we promised the last time because uh, last time, what the, uh, the president was promising, um, uh, they did not have all the facts. The problem itself has not been fully identified. But I think this time we have been able to, uh, especially our military, have been able to identify the problem. And then, of course, they are doing certain things about it. So for those uh, issues that are coming up, like, for instance, uh, Remember the uh, 12 uh, Tokano, A29 Tokano um, aircraft days. that we yeah. have ordered. They are going to be delivered in the second quarter of this year. And those are game changers. You know, those are going to change the game. And uh, if that is happening, I think uh, we have more precision in uh, dealing with what we say or delivery of the promises uh, that the military is giving. If you're saying we didn't have the facts before now, the president was just making promises, and you now know the problem, may I kindly ask, what is the problem? Uh, before, the facts were not gotten because they were politicians. And politicians will say anything, okay? Um, and uh, of course, um, identifying the problem that we have is deeper than what we are seeing, because there are root causes to this problem that we are having right now in Nigeria, you know, um, and they are very humongous because when you look at uh, the problems of uh, poverty, unemployment, you know, and when you talk of unemployment, you are talking about uh, the insurgents recruiting from a big bank of unemployed people. You are talking of uh, religious fanaticism, people who are not employed, who are not working, you know, the next thing is a human behavior to start to uh, depend on God. You know, uh, God. as long as uh, government is not going to do this for us, God will do it for us. You know, so it's easier to recruit from people who are, you know, uh, um, hungry or who didn't go to school very well or you know, people who are poverty-stricken. So this is the problem we're having. 
if they can face those root causes, I think uh, we'll have a headway. But it, it doesn't seem likely that, you know, that can end in one year. Um, you're a security expert and you've you're, you already mentioned poverty, uh, lack of employment. You know, we have staggering figures with regards to that. We're also dealing with, you know, situations where our borders uh, don't seem to have any control whatsoever. The uh, Tucano jets that you've mentioned, yes, would have, uh, provide uh, superior uh, uh, power uh, to the Nigerian Air Force. But the issue, like you mentioned, it's not just about having powerful helicopters or fighter jets. There's a lot of other issues that should come into play here if we're serious about ending the insurgency. The bandits that we've well, the criminals that were all the terrorists that we've named bandits now, the kidnappers, Tucano jets may not solve that. So how is this really possible in one year? Uh, you, you mentioned po political will, but how really is this possible? I can tell you that uh, you are very correct that this is not a problem that will be solved in two months or six months or one year because we are dealing with a bigger problem, okay? And like I said, it's asymmetric, it's ideological, so it becomes a very, very big problem. And we have to have the political will to pursue it. The political will is very, very important to pursue it. But when you talk about uh, the kinetic parts of it, where military, the military will come in with their Tokano uh, jets, and then of course, yes, they can help in uh, decimating the insurgency. They can help in dealing with bandits. It can even help with kidnappers. Because, you see, these, um, these jets are working with uh, an air-to-ground integration system that, of course, will be able to uh, pinpoint and isolate, you know, these uh, insurgents or kidnappers. But again, there are other ways, of course, to achieve, uh, you know, complementary ways of achieving this same problem. And those include um, the kidnapping part of it, where we should not be paying ransom. Or if ransom is paid, the security agencies should raise their capabilities to an extent where you cannot collect the money. Because... They are, the easy way with which kidnappers collect money these days is what even encourages them to go in there. So, make it difficult for them to collect the money. And then, of course, um, look at uh, ideological, uh, uh, psychological operations in talking to people, in changing people, debunking the same propaganda that the insurgents are using in recruiting people. Uh, I think uh, when we do that, we will get uh, some leeway, but uh, also, of course it can't end in one year. Also, um, if, if we having the same service chiefs that we've had for the last couple of years, um, you know, that maybe also means the same approach towards tackling insecurity. How is this going to be possible regardless of the political will that is, that is brought into play? Uh, well, um, you know, like I've said earlier or before, is that uh, removing the service chief does not solve this problem for us. You know, because uh, right now, for instance, we are bringing Tokano uh, uh, aircraft. The Tokano aircrafts have their own uh, standard operating procedure, which is not going to be affected by any service chief, the chief of air staff or chief of army staff. You know, the standard operating procedure will be carried out and it will achieve its objectives. So whether the chief of army staff or chief of air staff is there does not matter any longer. But where the problem of keeping the service chiefs becomes a problem is the service uh, succession plan. Because you know you, you you don't you don't stay in that position forever. People are retiring; they are getting to retirement age, and other younger officers are looking forward to becoming chief of. Uh, air staff. So uh, when it's your turn to go, you go, then others come in. And of course, when they come in, they bring in some new, fresh ideas. But uh, if you are staying put there, uh, it demoralizes those who are behind you. It uh, makes them like a desicle. 
And then, of course, uh, some of them might even resort to sabotage. So these are the kinds of problems keeping the service chiefs will cause. Uh, Dennis Amakri, you mentioned a point I want us to, you know, delve into and deeper. It's ideology. We'll all agree that uh, this is an ideological issue because no matter how many fighter jets you send to the Northeast and, you know, no matter how much, you know, the Nigerian army work, when they capture those insurgents, when they arrest them, the Boko Haram, the ISIS and the rest will still go on and recruit more people. So I think the fundamental issue here, in addition to issues of illiteracy, poverty and all of that unemployment, is the ideology. How, why don't we focus then on countering an ideological issue with an ideological solution that's convincing them or teaching them otherwise about you know the disadvantages or dismerits of you know getting recruited by these you know terrorists how about that solution yes there are many uh, counter propaganda uh, strategies that could be carried out and the army knows in fact the military has a major general in charge of propaganda, a major general in charge of propaganda, and what he could do are so many. There is a department called psychological operations, you know, where you actually walk towards the minds, the minds of these people, the hearts and minds, how to change it. Now, also, we have a government... Uh, a department called the National Orientation Agency. Uh, to be very honest with you, I don't know what they are doing. They are just sitting down there, maybe um, being a very, very uh, 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 useless cost center where government is just spending money on them. You know. Then there is another area that can come into play. We are talking about um, uh, the churches because we are we are strongly a religious-based country. What are the churches doing? What are the mosques doing? Even the, 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 uh, the mullahs or uh, the, 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 the malams that are teaching in those mosques, they know that what Boko Haram is teaching or using is a fundamentalist one that cannot help. So what are you doing? What are, they, what are they doing to support the efforts of government in, in fighting this? What are they putting out? What are they preaching on their Friday mosques? What are the Christians preaching on their Sunday services? So these, these are the things that we have to come to grips with because it is not a fight that is for government alone. It's a fight involving all Nigerians. Nigerians have to start playing their own part in this particular uh, war or insurgency, whatever we want to call it. Uh, wh wh why do you think uh, the, something you mentioned earlier, political will that you said you know, has been lacking, why do you think it has maybe been found now in 2021? You know, and for every Nigerian who's, who has suffered you know, the effects of the insurgency in the last decade and who maybe is still suffering, um, should they in any way have any belief in this particular statement the president has made? You know, the political will is very, very important. And of course, we want the leadership of the country to show political will. Because Nigeria's, Nigeria is a conglomeration of so many different tribes. And because we have so many different tribes, you know, uh, we are Yorubas before we become Nigerians. We are Igbos before, before we are Nigerians. We are Hausa Fulani before we are Nigerians, you know. And if you do an appointment today, you find out people will go through the list and say, how many Igbos are there, how many Yorubas are there, you know. And they look at appointments and they say, oh, oh, look at all the service chiefs are from one side of the country. You know, a leader with a political will will address issues like that and say, look, we are for Nigeria. We, we, are, we, are, we are Nigerians. This is the country where we have to say, uh, let us do this. It does not matter whether the problem is in the Northeast or it's in the South-South, because also the South-South has their own problems. We have militancy and piracy going on there. So you have to be a leader, a leader with a political will 
to do what you have to do, no matter which other counter or contrary uh, uh, notion that is coming from your tribe. Mr. Macri, what I'm hoping that we can put out this morning uh, to our viewers is some level of hope that the president will be able to come and, and pull through with, that, with the statement that he has made. Uh, from the things that you've said, it doesn't seem very likely. It seems like this is just, you know, another one of those speeches. If we are not able to um, incorporate every single detail, you know, the things that you've mentioned, and that regards unemployment and our borders and uh, the information that is being passed around the north and these, uh, you know, crisis areas. If we're not being honest about the spending that we have every year, you know, with regard to security and the billions of naira that is put into security every year that is almost unaccounted for, um, and we still don't see any difference. If there's no honesty with some of all those things, then it doesn't seem like this is going to be different. Um, and I, I don't know if, if there are things that you may want to share with our viewers this morning, just, you know, to give them some hope that maybe this statement makes, you know, uh, you know some sense and it's and is possible. Is there any signs that you may have you seen? Know, yeah, you know, the president is a human being, and he's a Nigerian. And he has led this country before. And I can tell you, when the first time he came, I personally worked with him in Dona Barracks. You know, and uh, there are a lot of things were changed in the country. A lot of things were changed in the country. And I know that right now, he's been listening. And of course, I don't think that he wants to leave a legacy a legacy of failure for Nigerians. I know that he is also worried. For him to come out and say that, okay, this year we're going to do certain things, you know, then it will happen. Because when, you, like I said, there are certain indices that you look at. We, we need the technological backing to do certain things, which we don't have before. Now, second quarter of this year, our Tokano aircrafts are coming in, they are going to have very, very strong air to ground integration. And then, of course, our space, the Defense Space Agency, Space Administration, is up and running right now. That is something that is a game changer in whatever is happening. It can solve the problem of insurgency. It can solve the problem of kidnapping, you know, and things like that. So. I think the president himself is becoming optimistic that, okay, now that we have this, remember uh, the Tokanos were canceled by President Obama. And now we have uh, them coming up and the, the, the contract is going to be delivered next quarter. So it gives hope to people that, yes, this time we're going to do this. And I know that 2023 is coming when the president is going to leave. So. Um, there is uh, this body of legacy that he has to leave for Nigerians because he's not running for re-election again. And uh, whatever, when he's gone, people are going to remember him just like they remembered him the last time when he was head of state. They will still remember him for all the security problems that we have now and the efforts that he has put in bringing them uh, to a very manageable level. Mm. Uh, well, still talking about political will, we've seen that uh, several, you know, uh, you know, military men have come out on social media, viral videos that they were eventually sanctioned for, saying that uh, they don't have the adequate facilities, that the Boko Haram insurgents have, you know, superior firepower than they do. And now for the 2021 budget, the president's recently signed of over 13 uh, trillion naira. We see that uh, security basically has the highest share, you know, the defense ministry getting so much you know of that uh, the budget of 2021 now do you think this would change anything regarding uh, equipment and training for the military in this year very correct very correct in fact that is one of the areas that uh, you know we have to also consider because when you look at the defense budget for 2021 and how much money is put to it because you know besides the money we've spent already because for, for the Tokanos, we spent about $539 million, you know, and that includes not just the planes themselves. It includes bombs, it includes all kinds of ammunition that are coming with it. So 
And that is a sight. Now, with the new one, you know, we are going to strengthen the police because that is a very, very serious area. Strengthen the police, strengthen the Navy because the, the Navy now also have uh, their regional, um, uh, regional uh, maritime awareness uh, capacity that they've developed, about three of them for the, uh, for the Gulf of Guinea. So all these are things that are coming up this year. And with those things coming up, we believe that, uh, yeah, there must be a change in the game we have been playing. All right, uh, Dennis Macri, thank you so much uh, for speaking with us uh, this morning. We hope that, um, you know, the statements of the president uh, actually come with the political will, like you've mentioned, uh, to end insurgency in Nigeria in 2021 and um, give us a more peaceful um, um, country to live in. Yes, thank you very much Thanks again. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right. Um, I'm, you know, what I truly was hoping, you know, for, even if, yes, in your heart, you can always already tell. Um, same old, know, same old. Same old, same old. You know, it, 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 it pretty much is, you know, it's the same type of political statements that have been made for, for a very long time. Um, you know, but talking about a legacy, um, I don't know if, you know, it's a regular Nigerian thing for politicians and, and public office holders to remember their legacy uh, when their tenure is about to be, you know, rounded up, you know, people started to talk about uh, legacy projects and, and things like that when they have two years left in their, in, their, in their tenure. So you spend six years and when you get into your seventh year or your eighth year um, after being president or governor for two terms, then you remember oh, legacy. Well, I, Doesn't that just remind you of when you know, were in school and you know you get assignments, you get brief from your lecturers. Oh, these these are things you need to do, but you you sometimes hold off until the last minute. I think you know that's that's exactly what we're seeing here. But but you know, the effect of doing that in government means loss of lives, loss of jobs, and a very 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 pitiful society, uh, simply because you're waiting to the last moment. And and to be honest, I don't know how this conversation can be had that will convince Nigerians that yes, it will end this year. Does it mean also that without Tucano jets, we wouldn't end insurgency in Nigeria? The problems that we're talking about with regard security are not necessarily a, we need more fighter jets. We don't need to have, you know, the biggest fighter no. jets in the world. We don't need to have F-15s and F-16s flying all around for us to end insurgency in Nigeria. I think there's a lot more that needs to be yes, done. Yes, we'll need to tackle poverty. We'll need to tackle illiteracy. We'll need to tackle unemployment. There's so much, so much involved in this. And I do hope the government, you know, is willing to actually follow through. Also very important is truth. Yes. And in the, in the absence of truth, we would continue to run around in circles. You know, two weeks or three weeks ago, I said it, you know, that if we're not being honest with ourselves, we we'll continue to do this naked dance in the market and um, continue to ex expose ourselves if we're not honest. The lack of truth and honesty has, con you know, let us continue be in the same space over and over and over and over again. And, and it, it's, it's, it's really heartbreaking. I'll be honest with you, it's really, really heartbreaking um, seeing these things, you know, play out this way. Anyway, that's, uh, that's where we'll draw the curtain on this conversation this morning. We'll take a short break here and we'll return to discuss burning issues like the NIN registration and the closure of the third mainland bridge. Do stay with us. <laughs>